what's going on everyone and welcome back last last week we got um, scenes and stuff importing so now we can save and import scenes well we've kind of got it static at the moment where it can only do one scene but it'll work for now and this episode we're going to work on time <clears throat> and at the end I may also add uh, the ability to create new scenes and import new scene or import other scenes but we'll see how much time we have at the end so uh see here this right here at the end of the last video um, we're I was having issues with uh, it, the scene not clearing and I put it at the end of the comments but I don't know if how many people actually saw it so if you didn't see it what it is is that code right here in the game object class in the clear method just add that little line of code and that does it for us so as you can tell I added a little note <clears throat> alright so let's get into this so create a new class we're gonna call it time Alright, and inside of here we need a, a bunch of different variables. Um, first, we're going to need a private static long, and I'll call it raw time. Because this is time before anything else affects it. And may change that variable later, but not right now. Um, we also need a variable of time. Another one is a double of, uh, call it raw delta for now. And we're going to need another float and it will be delta time. Uh, a lot of people use doubles, but I'm just using float just because it doesn't have to be 100% accurate with every single decimal. Uh, let's see here. Okay. Also need, let's see, we need a float. Um, Uh, I think Unity calls it unscaled delta, which unscaled delta is the same as delta time, except for it's not affected by uh, time scale. So, speaking of that, let's go ahead and add. Uh, yeah, make it a float. Let's go ahead and make time scale which is going to default to 1, which time scale is the multiplied, uh, the multiplied number for delta. So if you want things to move fast, say double speed, you would put it to 2. If you want it to move half speed, you would put it to 0 0.5, and so on. Um, another thing we need is this will be a final long of a second. All right, let's see if I get this right. It's uh, one zero 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 zero. zero. Um, let's see. I think zero. Zero 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 L. 
I believe it is nine zeros. We'll see about that. All right, and the next thing is, uh, hi, come on, private static int frame rate. So that'll be a variable that'll tell us what the current FPS is. And that is it for those at the moment. Uh, what these are is these are going to have their own uh, getters and setters and whatnot. And these right down here will not. These are specifically for uh, specifically for just this script. So we're going to need a start time and private static long last frame time and the private static long frame start time and private static long frame past time private static this one will be a double. This will be uh, let's go. Let's call it raw. I don't want to call it what everybody else calls it. Uh, no, I already have a raw time. Oh, uh, whatever. Um, unprocess time. And. Uh, I believe I'm going to need an integer of the current frame rate. Alright, so that's it for the variables. So, as for the methods, we need a static void init, not a public static void, which some of these scripts I'm using public static void which I need to remove those later as well we'll do like a optimization uh, an optimization episode here soon we'll get rid of some of this crap that we don't need so in the init function we're gonna say last frame time equals system dot nano time and start time equals last frame time. Now, if you don't know how all of this works, the gist of it is um, our delta time is the time it takes between the last frame and the current frame. And, uh, time we're just always pushing forward and that's basically just how that works and then you take a to get a the frame rate we basically just uh, kind of capture the average frame rate or get frame rate after so long there's several different ways you can do that but that's just that's the gist of it. It's it's not difficult at all, and it's a it's a fairly easy script. So the next method we need is a static void process. Once again, uh, we're not adding public because we only want it to be called within the engine package. All right, now. We're gonna get down to the um, down to the actual math of it all. So we're gonna say raw time equals system dot nano time. And then we need time to equal. We're gonna have to cast that to a float, and it's going to be time unit dot 
milliseconds and dot convert and in here we're gonna have to say raw uh, if I can spell it correctly raw time minus start time and then time unit dot nanoseconds and you added an extra one there all right so now we have raw time and time set now we need to adjust the frame start time the pass time and the last frame time so to do that we're going to go frame start frame start time equals raw time and then we're going to say uh, frame come on frame pass time equals frame start time minus last frame time and that gives us the time passed between uh, the start of the frame and the last frame and then we're gonna say last frame time what the world oh, I have my fingers wrong uh, last frame time equals frame start time so basically we just set it using the like I said the the time at the beginning of this frame minus the time at the last frame and then we're just setting the last frame to this current frame just so that the next loop around it will be at the right time all right and here we'll just say raw delta equals I believe it is um, frame pass time divided by cast this to a double and it will be a second now in here we need a little catch so we're going to say if raw delta is greater than 0 0.01 f so basically just a a small time frame then we're gonna say Delta time equals float uh, I think I can go 0 0.1 or 0 0.01 I'll go F mm. I need I don't even think I need to cast that uh, times time scale yeah there we go uh, so then that sets the Delta time and then what did I call it? Unscaled delta. Then unscaled delta equals 0.01f. So that way, uh, that way it can be. Uh, no no less than uh, 0 
Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so that way it doesn't go any lower than that. And then elf delta time equals float. And we need raw delta times time scale. And here is what I mean by multiplying for the delta time is as you can tell we're uh, multiplying it by the time scale and that's what's good about the time or the unscaled delta is it's always at uh, whatever it needs to be without any time scale manipula manipulation Wow, what, what in the world ever. Sorry, I was drinking last night and I've got a small headache today. And then unscaled delta equals float uh, raw delta. Now in here we need to set the unprocessed time. So unprocessed time um, plus equals uh, plus equals raw delta, and then current frame. Current frame rate uh, we'll just we'll add it. Current frame rate plus plus. Yeah, looks good. All right, now we need to do a check to see if unprocessed time is greater than one so if the unprocessed time is greater than one then greater or greater or equal to zero 1.0 f and I didn't spell all that out Then frame rate equals current frame rate, and then current frame rate equals zero, and unprocess time equals zero. And I believe that should be it. All right, now we do not have a way to get these. So let's, uh, I'll put it right here just so I know what I'm doing. We're gonna say, public static final uh, float time and then we're just going to return time and these are all going to be public static finals what are you complaining about This method has what in the world ever. All right, public static final 
float delta time. They're going to return delta time. What if I change that? Get time? Oh, there we go. Now, the public static final float unscaled delta. And we're going to return unscaled delta. And last but not least, we need frame rate. Public static int frame rate. And return frame rate. That's really all we need out of here. Um, now we need the ability to get and set. Let's change this to public. Remove it out of the private stuff. Okay, so that alleviates that function. Okay, that's, I believe, all we need out of there. So that can just be saved off. Alright, so in core, what in the hell? Okay, in core, let's go ahead and get rid of all this crap. Um, no, we need to get rid of render dot. That's the initialization for that. Toss that under editor. Get rid of that. And after all this, let's go time dot init. Research. Okay. We'll go time dot process. And that will process the time. Gooey dot GY dot prepare say right here I don't know if it's going to be visible but we'll see GUI dot label we're going to pass in um, time dot frame rate Does it have a two string method? No, it doesn't. We're going to need a um, integer dot 
two stream time dot frame rate. There we go. We'll just put it at zero zero. All right, let's see what happens. So if we start it, should just begin that project. Yes, and there is our frame rate way up there. So I'd say we're doing pretty good so far. Our frame rate is pretty high. Let me drop this to 100, no, 200. And just scoot that over a bit. There we go. So there's our frame rate. So it's really good. We're tearing up in the 140 to 170, 140 to 170 range. That's not bad at all. Considering that there's still a lot of stuff that we still need to optimize. And Whenever you create your game, none of this editor stuff will be affecting that frame rate. So this is actually extremely high for having the amount of stuff going on as what we do. Yeah, that dropped it a bit, but not really by much. So none of this stuff will be displaying in your actual game, so the frame rate will be even higher. Of course, we're only rendering one square right now, but yeah, but all this stuff won't be eating up that frame rate. And we'll, we'll get that frame rate as high as possible, and also remember that my computer is a piece of crap. So you're probably running something a lot higher than what I'm running. Uh, what, what are we at right now? 27 minutes. All right, I think we have enough time to add this. Oh, let's get rid of this too. We don't need any of that in the hierarchy constructor. Since we're loading our own scenes, make sure that it's still loaded it correctly. Yes. All right. So all all this is loaded from the file. Nothing is uh, any longer being created that is outside of the scene file. All right. So let's open up menu bar and let's create another menu item we have save scene so we also need a new scene and an open scene so new open so this will allow us to create a new scene and open a scene that was already created. So that way we can we can have multiple scenes. We don't have to worry about working strictly from one. That way we can just go ahead and get that out of the way. Also going to need to change this. So whenever I save a scene, I do not want it to save as a single name. I want it to do it by whatever name I give it. So let's comment that out. And right here we'll try something similar. So it'll be try um, editor dot save scene. I'm going to say scene manager dot current scene 
I know we haven't created it yet, but we will. In just a second. And here we'll catch, of course, IO exception E and E dot print stack trace. You know what? Let's not even print the stack trace. Let's say debug dot log. Um, could not save scene. And then uh, let's go. Plus um, scene manager dot current scene. Uh, not there. And there. All right, so let's open up. Uh, Scene manager. And say private static string. Then set current scene to equal name. There, now we have. Why aren't you doing it? Oh, because I haven't imported it. Import that. There, so now we have a current scene method. And every time we load a scene, it's going to set the current scene to the one that we loaded. And the reason why I'm having this as private and returning a static final is that way we can't change the current scene manually. We have to load the scene. That way there's no mix up or whatever. So now in here, you can go ahead and get rid of this because it's basically just doing the same thing just setting the name we need fm.name.equals uh, go open scene and I gotta spell that correctly e really equals copy it again paste it now let's not put a space and this one will be new scene so for the new scene it's going to be very simple because all we have to do is just create an empty file well to create the set the empty file for now I'm just going to use some of Java's uh, built-in stuff so I'm going to be using just a J file chooser uh, 
that way we can weed out some of this stuff that's coming in with lightweight Java game library and we can uh, get rid of uh, tiny FD eventually but for now I'll just I'm just gonna go ahead and start weeding it out so for here we're gonna say J file chooser and FC equals new J file chooser let's import this and um, first thing we need to do is set the current directory so set current directory and it takes in a file unfortunately so it's going to be editor dot working directory plus uh, scene and that will be our, it'll automatically go to our scenes folder. Really? I hate it when it doesn't give me an import. So, import java.io.file. I don't need that file. Come on, you butthole. There we go. I don't know, sometimes it goes all stupid like that and it doesn't allow you to do anything, nor does it give you the option to get what you want. Alright, so that sets the current directory for the file chooser. And next we need to set the file filter so that we can only pick scene files. So FC dot set file filter new file name extent extension filter. I hope I spelled that right. And then we're gonna say scene file and scene. There we go. Alright, so this is basically saying it's a, just a short description of what it is we're uh, what it is we're picking. And that is a scene file. And this right here is the extension. So just in case you guys aren't used to working with uh, file choosers, that's just that's the setup of it. So after this, we need to say uh, if name dot ends with dot scene, and we need to say name equals name dot replace dot scene with empty. Did I not get a name? Oh. You know what? I'm going ahead of myself. I haven't even gotten the name yet. Um, under here, you need to say int result equals fc dot show we're going to be using a save dialog and null because we don't have we don't have anything to use as a parent so that'll just remain null so if result equals equals j file chooser dot approve option So, if we 
click cancel or the X, then it will not be the approve option. Approve option is only if it's something, if we actually get a safe path. Um, so now we can create the file. So file F equals new file editor dot working directory plus scenes plus name plus dot scene why am I still I am creating stuff like way ahead of where I'm supposed to. I keep on thinking that I'm putting in, that I have a name down and I'm not. So we'll put down put that down there because we're gonna use it here in, here in a second. I just keep on getting ahead of myself. I'm trying to cut things out where it shouldn't be cut out. All right. We need a file dot, or not file, uh, file temp equals fc dot get selected file. <laughs> okay. So now we can start getting the name. So string name equals temp dot get Okay, so to describe what I was do, or trying to do just a minute ago, um, how this is going to work is uh, JFile Chooser, whenever it is approved, it already has a file attached to it. But the problem is, is our scene manager doesn't require a dot dot extension to actually load the file so we're gonna have to kind of wiggle it and instead of like loading the scene with just the name because either way we're gonna have to do some splits because there's two different kinds of uh, two different kinds of names we'll be working on so how I'm going to do this is uh, create a new file because also like uh, when you're using J file choosers I'm sure anybody who's used them in the past has known this that if you just type the name like say the save dialog comes up and you just type the name of what you want to save it as there is no extension like it does not add it to it but we have to put it on there for whenever we're actually saving the file so we're gonna have to use two different two different files anyways but then at the same time we don't need the name for whenever we're loading the scene so it's kind of a little complicated thing um, but we're gonna take care of all that right here so now that we have the name, I can actually drop this stuff in there. So we're going to need this one. Put it right here. So this is basically going to say that if we typed the name of the scene and then dot scene, then it's going to remove the dot scene at the end of it. Uh, at the end of the path name. For whenever we create the other file so now we can say try I'll just go ahead and do the catch as well uh, catch this is an IO exception as well IO 
Come on. Come on. Exception E. Um, I'll say debug.log could not could not save new file at pass could not save new scene at path. There we go. So that'll be our catch. And here we can steal this that we created earlier. And put it here. And this will be creating the new file with the dot scene extension that we removed earlier. And so whenever we do this, we're going to say f dot create new file. And that creates the new file. It basically just creates an empty file for us. And here, now all we have to do is just pass in the name because we've already got it stripped out. So scene manager dot load scene and then pass in the name so either way we're gonna have to use this it's just I chose to put it to break it up that way for the file name so that I can use it simpler on here otherwise it would be simpler on here and longer on here so either way it's the same way so if you question why it was done that way that's why it's because either way it has to be done so that that is it for creating a brand new scene like I said it's all it is just creating a, a brand new a brand new file that has nothing written in it and I have it set up this way where it always goes to our scenes folder regardless of where you put it. And that's because we're not always going to be using a J file chooser. Whenever we create a new scene, I do not want a file chooser in the end product. We're actually going to be making our own windows, our own pop-ups, and etc and it will not be any kind of chooser at all it'll just basically be just like a like an input field that pops up that you can fill in whatever you want and i would just be using tiny fd but we're going to be removing completely tiny fd here shortly so there's no point in doing all that Alright, so now we need the open scene stuff. And this is fairly easy as well. Uh, once again, we're going to be needing a J file chooser, which we'll just call FC new J file chooser. Duplicate. I should be able to duplicate it anyways. I don't know what you're whining about. Oh, something isn't closed properly. What don't I have closed? Ah, right here. There we go. FC. Because I don't want to take up F, just in case later we need that short. There we go. So now we, of course, need to do the whole 
uh, thing that we did earlier, which is set the current directory and the file filter. So fc dot uh, set current directory and new file editor dot working directory plus scenes yes all right fc dot set file file filter second the wife is saying that her family wants to go to the store So set file filter, we're going to say scene file and scene, of course. Why are you being a pain in the... Set file filter, oh, new file name extension. Oh my god, I'm retarded. New file name extension what now file name extension filter sorry can she completely kicked me off my mind track which of course wasn't that great anyways but Okay, now we can do the result. I had to look ahead to make sure I didn't skip anything else. Which we're going to be showing open dialog. Because we're going to be opening a file. And here it's just going to be super simple. If result equals equals j file chooser dot Approve option. Then we're going to say scene manager dot load scene. And we're going to pass in fc dot get selected file dot get name dot split at the dots. And it will, of course, be the first one. So, once again, this only works if the scene file is inside of that scene folder. If it's outside of this scene folder, then, of course, you're going to have some issues loading the scene. It's not going to load it because it's not inside of that folder. So, yeah. That's why file choosers aren't suitable for this, is because we're only loading stuff that's inside of our scene folder. And a J file chooser, it's you're going to be able to open it from anywhere, and people are going to make that mistake and be like, "Oh, this doesn't work right." Well, yeah, it works right. It's just it's that's not really meant for, or that's not really what it's supposed to be meant for. All right, now we're run a little late here. Let's go ahead and open this up. All right, so let's uh, let's create a new scene, and I will name it Other Scene. And it should just wipe out everything. 
Yep. So here's a brand new scene. Go on here and we go to open scene. We can click on new scene, which is the very first one that we created that has all the objects in it. Oh, come on. And scene wasn't loaded because it could not be found. Okay, give me just a second. No, oh, I'm a ding dong. Right here, I just put the I put backslash, not forward slash. Okay, hopefully that fixes it. <laughs> it's always got to be something stupid. Let's load that up. We've already got the other file saved, so let's just go ahead and try to open that scene. Other scene wipes it clean. We try to open the scene. It loads that scene. Awesome. So let's open this empty scene again. And I'll create a new game object. Let's rename this. Uh, yeah. Why not? Uh, potato head. Oh, come on. Potato head. I don't have these set up so it kind of interacts with things behind it. And There we go. I'm sure you've noticed that, that it interacts with everything behind it whenever you click. I don't, I'm going to have to do something with the inspector to get that to stop happening. Save scene. Let's open new scene. Changes there. And reopen this one. There's potato head. Bam! Working. So that is looking good. Alright. So, in the next episode, we will get things moving by, well, by literally getting things moving. Uh, we're going to set up the uh, what you would call the game loop, even though we already have a game loop going on. It's actually going to call call the uh, our custom logic behaviors that are attached to these game objects. It's actually going to call the update functions and get everything running. We're going to, yeah, well, start runtime, <laughs> even though our time is already uh, kind of giving us that, which is a big chunk of what runtime is, essentially. And we will probably add a little option to go ahead and toggle in and out of uh, runtime as well. That way we can uh, go from edit time to runtime, and then it reloads the scene after runtime is done, and then locks it back up again where it doesn't call the update functions, and it doesn't call the GUI functions for the game itself. All right, well, thanks for watching, and I will see you next week.